Hi, this is Dave Durand, and we are uh, in our podcast series, which is to answer 100 questions uh, about how to build a business from zero to 100 million, or really to any level at all that you're talking about uh, within that particular range. It could be a, a million dollar company, 10 million, could be a 100 million. You get beyond 100 million, it gets a little bit different. It, I, traditionally, the same sorts of things, but uh, we'll talk about those. So the question today is, Steve, what is the question? How should I fund my business? How should I fund my business? This is, of course, a, a very popular question. I can tell you that I've done it several different ways. Um, one of the ways that you fund a business is you just go out there and you earn some money and you seed it yourself. You just put the money in it and you say, basically, okay, this is a small business. It's going to cost me X uh, amount of money to run the business over a three-month period of time. By the time I hit that three-month period of time, I should have enough revenue to cover my expenses. Now, I, of course, have to live as well, too, so I need to cover that amount. What do I have there? I've got to grind this out and make it happen, so how do I save that money? That's one of the ways that people do it. Another way that people do it is clearly angel investors. They go to that, you know, the, the, the uh, you know, uh, Mr. Uh, Uncle Rich money bags there, and they say, hey, uh, can you lend me a little bit of money for this business, and can you do it at a low rate because, hey, I'm your nephew. So that's a way that people do it. Um, it's not a bad way to do it. I think that there have been a lot of people who have uh, had strained relationships because of it. You know, sometimes it's not as close as an uncle. It could just be somebody else, a friend of a friend, and they're going to put the money in that way. It's still considered an angel investment. Another way is, of course, to take on debt. Uh, this is uh, precarious uh, for a lot of different people. And the reason that it's uh, precarious is because they may not be a proven entrepreneur. And so they're wondering, hey, am I going to lose my house if I do this? Now, you and I all know people who have literally lost their house starting a business uh, because they, they thought they were ready to do it. They thought they had an idea that was going to work and it didn't. And now they're in a pretty difficult situation. So those are things to consider, uh, but not reasons to not do it. I would just say there's the reasons to consider. If, if, you, if you take this like fearful approach to all things, you can't get anywhere in life. So the, another way to do it is private equity. Now, I will tell you that for most of these, whether you're going to you know, try to get a loan from somebody, unless it's your own equity in a house and you're, you're, you're you know, getting a, you know, a second mortgage on your home, in which case they're not asking in too much detail what you're using the money for. Uh, they're more or less kind of encouraging you to get that loan anyway because they're going to make money on it. Um, but you, get, you have to convince somebody. That's really the idea here. If, if you're going to uh, try to get money from somebody, whether it's a private equity company, an angel investor, or you're going to convince a bank that you're worth it, you're going to have to convince them. I think that's the more important question than what angle do I go with, although they're all very important questions. They also have to do with uh, just kind of your willingness to accept risk and uh, to be held accountable for how this ends up going in the first place, too. Uh, and they are also tied to what form of corporation you're going to actually be establishing when you begin. But here's, I think, the main point on this. If you have an idea that you're having a difficult time convincing a bank, a private equity company, or your friends and family to invest into, uh, or maybe your husband or wife to ride alongside you with, you maybe should reconsider the idea. Okay, now... I know when you say that, you're going to say, well, what about this person? Everybody told them no. And what about that person? Everybody told them no. And everybody told this person, no, it can't be done. And they forged forward. And that is why we now have the egg beater helmet. No, we don't actually have the egg beater helmet. That's a stupid idea. Nobody would do it. It is, in fact, why we have certain things like better electric cars or why we do have electricity. I do understand that. But for the most part, when people have ideas that nobody else can relate to, they're bad ideas. Uh, we love our own ideas. We sit there and we say, oh, this idea is the best. It's going to make millions. I know that I've come up with the solution to all things. And you, you sound a little bit like the, the people in the early part of American Idiot, uh, American Idol, excuse me. Uh, I call it American Idiot in the first portion of the show. The, the end, it's not so much. But in the beginning, you have all these people who are like, oh, I can sing better than anyone. I am going to be the next American Idol. And literally millions of people at home, plus all the judges are saying, don't ever sing again. This is not your thing. You should find something else. But they go, no, I'm going to be, you know, because their mom told them they, they can sing well. They're the only person on the planet that ever said anything positive about their singing, but they're hanging on to it. 
So a lot, we look at our own ideas that way. And we have a tendency to believe that, you know, your idea is great because it's your idea and everybody's going to like it. Uh, but that's not necessarily true. So don't be afraid to hear the type of feedback uh, that is necessary for you to determine whether or not this might uh, be or might not be an idea that's worth uh, pursuing. This is one of the reasons that I would say that the entrepreneurs who have great uh, creative ideas. In other words, they're taking something and they're starting it from nothing. They don't really need me to tell them uh, uh, that they have or don't have a good idea because the rare people like that that have a great intuition about it, they don't really look for affirmation. They, they see something others can't see. I would say, though, for the starting entrepreneur, the best thing to do is to innovate on an idea, not invent one. Entrepreneurship is misassociated way too often with invention, and it's really not about invention. Entrepreneurship, for the most part, is about innovation. Hmm, people like cheeseburgers. I think what I'm going to do is make a better cheeseburger place. Okay, you didn't invent cheeseburgers. Now, you might invent a better way for people to receive their cheeseburger and better packaging, but you're not inventing cheeseburgers. And, of course, this is the, the way that most people traditionally earn money. But when you're trying to invent something new, like the ice cream burger, okay, well, maybe people aren't going to want meat mixed in with their ice cream, okay? Probably a bad idea. Even if you happen to have a particular taste for it, it sounds pretty gross. And when everybody goes, mmm, that's going to be hard to get past marketing and cram it down their throats to see if they like it. So you just want to make sure that why don't you just go with ice cream <laughs> and then go with your cheeseburgers, but don't try to invent something just because you personally like it. Now, once you've had success and you realize, wow, I could take an idea that was there and I could make it better. I could innovate on it. I could distribute it better. I could find a better way to price it. Uh, I could make it more appealing. Uh, then you may find yourself in a mode where you can say, wow, I've learned something that allows me to be creative. In other words, to take something and, and create it, uh, basically a concept that didn't exist and to, now to make that happen. Um, but usually what happens is pe people find themselves pretty atta attached to the idea of innovation. And they say, well, I'm going to take a bunch of ideas that are, exist out there that people have proven they like, and I'm just going to make them better. Or, you know, and by the way, I think that's always best. That's really what makes uh, the marketplace a better thing is everybody's better when people try to get better at what they provide. But uh, you, you might say, well, I'm just going to do it as well. I'm just going to emulate that person and I'm going to go in that town. See, a lot of people are nervous about that. They go, okay, well, there's a cheeseburger joint in that town, so therefore I can't have a cheeseburger joint in that town. No, that's not true. It's likely that you're going to have more and more and more people eating cheeseburgers or veggie patties, whatever it is that you're eating nowadays, okay? So the idea is, is to not be too concerned. People get really concerned about competition because they, they make it competitive. And I think that it's a good idea to look at competition as not necessarily something always competitive, but something that, that kind of elevates the appetite for all things. I mean, Starbucks doesn't compete against itself, but you'll see Starbucks on four different corners in the same place. Why? Well, because they're grabbing the traffic that was here that they were missing and then the traffic here that they were, they were missing. And yet what's interesting is a person might say, well, there's a Starbucks there, so I can't have my store here because, you know, people already get their coffee there. Well, if their advertising is better and their coffee is better, maybe they're going to go there, but you could advertise more effectively in that area than them, and you could actually uh, probably do a, a great job in pulling in that particular traffic. It's one of the reasons that you see a McDonald's and a Burger King on the same corner, all right? Uh, the, the hardest lease to sign, and of course, in the, in the uh, post-COVID, uh, more uh, internet-oriented days, this is a bit of an antiquated analogy, although the, you do find them opening, but in a food court, um, particularly in like a mall area, and a lot of malls are actually just becoming entirely food courts, but uh, the hardest lease to sign is the first one. And the reason for it is because uh, there's nobody else there, which means that for a food court really to work, you need competition because that competition draws in a bigger appetite and it allows everybody to actually do well. So I guess the thing that I'm saying about this is don't try to worry as much about how you're going to fund it than uh, you are making sure that you have an idea that works, Okay. Uh, because if you have an idea that works, people are going to actually want to be a part of it. They're going to they're going to see it. They're going to recognize it. The last part of this, though, is they're going to believe in you more than the idea. I've seen so many people 
with a remarkable idea, but the person you're just saying, I just, I, I would not judge them to, you know, be my Uber driver. I would not trust them to, to watch my kids. I, I would not judge them to catch a baseball that was aimed at their face. So I don't know that I'm going to judge them with this. And of course, those are all metaphors. Clearly, you could be uncoordinated physically in a brilliant mind for business. But it's about trusting the person. It's about believing in the person. So your enthusiasm, your conviction, your level of understanding, your lack of naivete, which means that you would have savvy, um, those are going to be the things that I think attract people just as much as the product that you have as well, too. Great question. Keep them coming. You can uh, just comment below uh, to add your question to the list. We have 100 questions. We don't even have all the questions yet, by the way, but we're going to answer 100 questions uh, to uh, to this because over the years I've gotten more than 100. There's not going to be a problem having those add up. That's for certain. Thanks for joining us. This is Dave Durand. We'll look forward to talking to you next time.